You're watching Medical News Network, your trusted source for the latest in medical news and information. I'm Mike Wigenstein. Today we take a look inside the world of computer-assisted colonoscopy. What is it? How does it work? Is it safe and reliable? Why it's revolutionizing medicine as we know it, and how it's changing people's experiences for the better. So if you're over the age of 40, have a family history of cancer, or would just like to be better informed, this is for you. Stick around, it's going to get interesting. Welcome to an educational and comprehensive discussion with today's top medical experts. This is your trusted source for the latest in medical news and information. You're watching Medical News Network. What is a hero? Are heroes born or are they made? In after school programs, your kids will uncover hidden strengths, discover they have the power to change their future, and find the hero inside themselves. Let us know you on after school programs in your area. Call 1 800 USA Learn. After school programs, helping kids find the hero within. Young, who got some good minutes in the first half, hits the jumper. Tiffany Young, a junior from Hillsboro, Alabama, has four. Young, 17 foot, has got it. And Tiffany Young with a sensational performance. Welcome back. We're pleased to have in studio today Dr. William Glenn. Dr. Glenn received his degree from the prestigious Johns Hopkins University, his MD from Washington University, and did his radiological residency at Harvard Medical School. Dr. Glenn is a recognized leader and international speaking authority on state-of-the-art CT and MRI imaging. Dr. Glenn is a member of the American Society of Neuroradiology, the Radiological Society of North America, and the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Dr. Glenn was a pioneer in many of the medical procedures we take for granted today and is currently at the forefront of the future in colon cancer detection, computer-assisted or virtual colonoscopy. Dr. Glenn, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Okay, I normally ask you to tell me a little about your history and your background, but you were adamant before you would come and do this interview with me that I actually go and have this procedure done. I learned a lot about the procedure, but how many people a year die from colon cancer? Michael, it's between 55 and 60,000 a year. So it's the equivalent of one 9-11 event every three weeks. How many of those people have to die from colon cancer? Uh, the cure rate, if you know about the precursor polyps, is above 90%. There is a 7% incidence of flat aggressive cancers, but the vast majority, above 90%, if those precursor polyps can be found and removed, those patients are cured. So 50-some thousand of those people could be cured if they knew that they had the polyps removed. They just never go and get checked? Uh, they don't get checked. It's not a subject that is comfortable to talk about. It's embarrassing. And a lot of their private doctors simply aren't aware of the state of the art of colorectal cancer screening. There are four approved insurance reimbursement methods. Okay, we're going to get into those. And I'm going to have you show me because I, I have, and I, we had this discussion, I've actually had three of the four, and now I've had four of the four done. And I will tell you, it was probably the most humiliating, degrading experience I've ever had. So I would understand why most people don't go and get checked. Before we get into that, there have been some studies out. And I want to talk to you about this because I've done some research. There have been some studies by multiple organizations, some saying that virtual colon assist, or computer-assisted colonoscopy is actually better than where they go in with the scope and they put the thing six feet up inside you. And I know you brought a scope today so we could see what that looks like. And then there's those that say it's not the same. And everybody saw Katie Couric go on TV nationally, and we saw her get a virtual one year and a, and, a, and a regular scope the next. Why is there this big variance in these reports? The first three major reports of 99, uh, 2000, and 01 were from single slice CT scanners and showed the gate and showed the basic equivalency of a fiber optic and a virtual colonoscopy with a CT scanner above 10 millimeter polyp diameters. Okay, so we're, t you, you brought something, I know we have, we have a pencil here for you to show me. How big, is a, how big would that polyp be? 
The polyps that we're looking for are as big as the number two pencil eraser, which is seven millimeters. That will be the trigger diameter for removing them. We will ignore the ones below seven millimeters. Why, why do you ignore the smaller ones? Because when you approach three millimeters in diameter, you have a zero percent chance, nearly zero percent chance, of having colon cancer in those polyps. When you get to between six millimeters and nine millimeters, there's about a one percent, one in a hundred chance that that polyp, that tiny polyp, will have cancer. When you get to 10 millimeters and above, uh, especially above 10 millimeters, 12 to 15 millimeters, the percentage of cancer in those polyps runs between 5 and 10 percent. So we need to get below 10 millimeters and remove the ones from 7 and above. How many of them, I know because talking to people, I know that when they go in with the, rigid, with the scope, a lot of times they'll take out one or two or three millimeter polyps. Not, um, not necessary. But they, how many of those smaller polyps are normally cancerous? Almost zero. So there's really no reason to have them taken out? That's right. Okay. Back to the studies. The, the computer assisted, and, and I will tell you, the more I read lately, the more that they're saying it five or six millimeters and above, the computer assisted, the virtual colonoscopy, is actually better at seeing the polyps than the scope. The, the breakthrough study came in December of '03. It was the lead article in the New England Journal, and it was done by three military hospitals. It was an absolutely brilliant study. So for anyone who thinks that sometimes the military doesn't get it right, they got it really right. Like, and what did the study show? The study showed that at polyp diameters of 7 millimeters and above, that the virtual colonoscopy was better than the fiber optic colonoscopy. It was safer, it was cheaper, and it was more thorough. Because the rub is, if you think that the fiber optic is seeing 100% of your colon as the so-called gold standard, it's really only seeing 80%. Right, because it can't see behind the ridges. And That's the, right. And you're also susceptible, there's no real record of it, to whoever happens to be looking through the tube while they're doing it. If they miss something, they, 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 there's no way to really go back and, and relook. The, the fiber optic exams, while they're done on video, are not videotaped. So the operator does not have a chance to recheck himself or herself give you a copy of the videotape or share it with a colleague for a second opinion. So uh, most people don't know that. And the virtual gives you all of that. Virtual c can see upwards of 100% of the colon and what uh, the radiology people are bending over backwards to do if you go in for a screening exam is to hand you a CD of all of the original data so that you have everything. How many people in the United States every year right now, how many people are of age or at risk that should be checked? The uh, number is 60 million, uh, and that includes the people with a family history should start being screened at 40 years does, old. Does diet have anything to do with it? Diet, no, uh, but uh, family history does. Environment? Uh, I don't know the answer to environment. I don't think so. Family history does, a history of colon cancer, uh, ulcerative colitis, uh, um, ulcerative colitis and uh, it, inflammatory bowel disease predisposes people to have uh, problems with colon cancer. All right, we're going to take a, a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about my procedure, what we did. We're going to look at the scopes. We're going to see how it is. And I do want to tell you here, right here, right, I have never experienced something that was so easy, so painless, and so quick. It was less than 30 seconds they had me on the table taking the x-rays. When I did my other scope, uh, they tried to knock me out completely, and I think I was in there for two hours. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to actually look at my personal virtual colonoscopy, and we're going to look at some of the scopes and other devices that are normally used in colonoscopy. We'll be right back. Whether you're expecting or looking for that perfect baby shower gift, we have you covered, baby, at PregnancyStore.com. Wear your pre-pregnancy pants a little longer and those cute maternity fashions a little sooner with the Bella Band. The Serenity Star Body Pillow is many pillows in one. It supports you while you're pregnant and makes an amazing nursing pillow. It's the one-stop shop for moms-to-be. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, Sally's having some behavioral problems. I guess that reward system isn't working. Well, the timeouts weren't either. You know, parents do find that timeouts aren't... See? Well, you're just too lenient. Well, you're too strict. No, you are. No, you are. No, you are. No, you are. When adults don't have the answers, they can feel as frustrated as kids. Connectforkids.org has thousands of resources for helping kids in your community. Connectforkids.org. Guidance for grown-ups. Why 
would anybody give someone they don't know a gift? They do it because this gift saves lives. And the need for it is desperate. We need over 20,000 people to give this precious gift every day. Please give blood. There's a life to be saved right now. Call the American Red Cross at 1-800-GIVE-LIFE. Almost half of all parents who suspect their child has a problem learning wait a year or more before getting them help. Why? When there's so much they could be achieving. Kids with learning disabilities are smart. They just learn differently. Call or visit us on the web now. Welcome back. Okay, before we go any farther, you've used the word polyp. What exactly, for those that don't know, what exactly is a polyp? It's an abnormal collection of tissues. It's like a pimple on the lining of your colon. If you have something that's seven millimeters above in Do, the, in do the, most people have those? I mean, is that um, a common occurrence? One, in a, in a normal, non, in a normal low-risk population, there'll be one in 10, or about 10%. And then those, as they grow, if they get larger than seven to 10 millimeters, can become cancers. Can become cancers. If you have something like that in the breast of a loved one or in your lung, you may already have a virulent disease, okay, that you might survive. If you have something like that in the lining of your colon, you have five to ten years to find it and get it out before it becomes uh, a danger to you. So, so the, a, the growth is very slow. Growth is very slow and we have a precious window of opportunity that is not being taken advantage of. We're here today, we're talking about virtual call and especially you've designed software and I, everybody's seen the fly through where they fly through the colon and they do. You've actually designed software that takes the colon, splits it and flattens it out for even easier examination. Well, if you use the fly through, you have to fly through each data set in both directions. So that's four fly throughs and it takes an experienced examiner uh, 20 to 40 minutes to do that. If you use the more popular 2D approach where you look at all of the images, you're looking at a couple of thousand images for each data set. Again, 20 to 40 minutes. What we've done is we've taken the long curved air-filled colon, we've mathematically straightened it, we've, uh, been able to, we've been able to slit it open and open it up and fly over it like a video game, potentially allowing us to identify normal cases in massive numbers in 90 seconds or less. Okay. With the virtual, and I want to get into the scopes, because I will tell you again, I've had all of them. I've had a barium enema, I've had the, 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 the rigid scope, and I've had the, the colonoscopy. This is, a, this is the rigid scope. This is a, a rigid, disposable, plastic sigmoidoscope, which probably gets a third to 40% of the colon, the lower end of the colon. Okay, and that they just basically... This is what you described to me first happened to you when you were 13 years yes, old. Yes, they just basically blew air and shoved the thing in it went. And the, uh, the other alternative, the gold standard, is the fiber optic telescope, which is two meters long. Now they put this in its entirety all the way up inside of you. That's right. Six this, feet. This is the, that's right. The first 15 to 20 minutes of the exam is to get to the upper end of the colon. The they don't look equivalent. going in. Uh, they don't look going in by and large. And so this thing is able to turn corners with its controls. It has a light source on the end. You can put surgical s instruments and snares through it to grab polyps. But I just want everybody to see how long it is. It, I'm sure that the viewers are looking and seeing how long it is. You're knocked out so you don't know how long it is. Why do they knock you out? Because uh, it's painful. Going around some of the corners uh, is tough. Now, now and, and we've had this discussion and you try to downplay this, but this is a huge fear of mine when they did it. Is it possible this can puncture the wall of the colon? Uh, occasionally with this exam, especially in uh, friable colons, uh, delicate colons, yeah. Uh, if they've overinflated them uh, or if they push too hard. Uh, it's rare, but and it I, is I, a complication. I, I, I went to the Mayo Clinic's website and noticed that they recommend, if you're going to have one of these done, that you stop any kind of blood thinning medicine at least a week prior to getting it done. Is that because there's a chance of bleeding? Yes. Okay, now we're going to move on to my favorite, 
which I've just discovered is my newest favorite, which is the virtual. All they put was a little tube and air. That's is right. that is that the standard? Uh, the standard, if you have good sphincter control, uh, and if you well, don't you, over... Uh, you, they, they do if you have the little bubble, which yeah, I you, prefer. You, they you, put you, the little bubble. You have one that's slightly larger that's got a little bubble that keeps it from popping out. Um, in, inflate the colon with air. I was on the table for... Well, in your situation, uh, you were amazed that it was all over with in 14 minutes. I'm sure we... And the scan time on your back and on your stomach was, like you said, about 20 seconds each. And you... Not us had control no, I, over the I, inflation. I, it was my, it was my, and I, I wanted to see if I would put in the same amount of air the doctor would put in, and right. obviously I put in way more than he did. But that went up, and I gave it some pumps on this. Well, the normal number of pumps is is, is twenty five to forty. Right. You're a big guy, so we would have expected you to get to fifty. I think you told me you got to seventy five. Yeah. And your colon was unbelievably inflated. And it was it, the thing. It was. Was there a little pressure? Yeah, there was a little pressure, but nothing worse than I've had when after you, a meal When sometimes. you were in the process of rolling over to get on your tummy, okay, you stopped for just about 10 or 15 seconds, and we asked you, you know, are you just, I'm having just a little cramp. A little bit of cramp, it, and, it the air, away. and the air went through, and I went right on over. Yep. Okay, well, would you like to see what you look like inflated? Well, I, I'm going to want to see that, but now, you put them on the table. I, I'm just asking, is my experience normal? I mean, because I can't imagine in my head, and obviously I didn't know what it was before, but I can't imagine that if I could go and find out if I, and obviously I don't, thank you very much, but had polyps, had anything without having to go through that scope, there would be no reason I wouldn't go do it. I can tell you with that scope, there was a hundred reasons you and I talked about that. That's one of the reasons I wanted to interview you, that I didn't think that in today's society with all the information we had, that's barbaric to me. Now, obviously, if you have to have a polyp removed... There is no better way than the fiber optic colonoscope to have that thing taken out. Right, but my point was, and, and, this, and of course I, I think a little different than everybody else, but if I went and had a virtual and I found out that I had a 10 millimeter polyp that had to be removed... And it was only and a it was, little ways up. It was eight inches inside of me. They could go in and remove it. Yeah. With the scope, they would have to go all the way six feet through. And I don't know if everybody knows just how curvy the bowel can be, my personal is, is very curvy, you, you may mention that, but they would have to go all the way through, six feet, and then come back and then find that, that polyp 10 inches before they came out. You're, uh, you're exaggerating just a little bit. It's not six feet, it's well, closer to four, but it looks like it's six feet. Well, it scares and, me to death. And, and yes, your colon was a little bit curvy. So, but I went through nothing different. You didn't do anything special no, for me. No, nothing. The, the, the preparation, very simple, very easy to do. That is the standard that people go through. Yes. Nothing. What, what is not standard, which you put your finger on, is you made the observation, well, if somebody wants to come up and twist the, right. the hair you're on the Right, you control your own pain. Yeah, if you're in, and so you insisted on being in control of your own I didn't want to put that in because I, I, I wanted to make sure that I got nothing different than anybody else, with well, that you didn't do anything special for me because... You, I ask you to come and do this interview with me. No, you 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 uh, puffed yourself up better than most people would allow a doctor to puff themselves up. So okay, now I know you've been dying to show me. I haven't seen it yet. Show me mine, Michael. This is you. It's life size. This is your inflated colon. This is the rectal end. This is the sigmoid portion of the colon backwards this way. Tight turn right here. A lot of people come straight across, so this isn't quite as tight a turn. Okay. This is called the transverse portion of the colon, and this, all the way over to here. This is, that is where normally, and obviously I didn't go through it this time because I had the virtual, but normally that is where no, they no, would... Normally they spend the first 10 or 15 minutes getting the scope to here so they can begin to look at, at the colon pulling out. And they is that get, why they basically knock you out when they do it? Well, coming around the corners is tough. Is there, and is there a, a chance of perforation? A uh, small chance of perforation. Now, and on mine... That was about it. That was it. About that far, a little bit of air. Yep. And you were able to get that picture and see that. And we have a lot of other images of other portions of the abdomen, a couple of things in your kidneys. Okay, we're going to get to that when we come back. I want to have you explain all the other stuff to me. We're in studio with Dr. Glenn. We're talking about virtual colonoscopy. We need to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the other organs and what you can see that you can't see with a standard scope. Stick around. We'll be right back. Whether you're expecting or looking for that perfect baby shower gift, we have you covered, baby, at PregnancyStore.com. Preggy Pop Drops are an all-natural way to ease morning sickness. Flavors include sour lemon, tangerine, and raspberry. Find your most fertile days with the Fertile Focus Saliva Ovulation Predictor. 
this microscope pinpoints ovulation. It's the one-stop shop for moms-to-be. Janice is one of four million people suffering from Alzheimer's disease. There are days when she can't even remember the name of her illness. But thousands of researchers are working on a cure. So that one day, we won't remember the name of it either. For more information on Alzheimer's disease research, call for a free fact sheet. 1-800-438-4380. I feel scared. Sometimes my parents have to take me to the hospital. I feel like a fish with no water. You know how to react to their asthma attacks. Here's how to prevent them. Call 1-866-NO-ATTACKS. Visit www.noattacks.org or call your doctor. Because even one attack is one too many. This is the hand that sows the seed, that grows the forest, that gives shape to the wind, that carries the kite, that is flown by the child, that is loved by the woman, that gives to Earthshare, that supports the hand. Earthshare is the workplace giving program bringing the leading environmental groups together. Support Earthshare, support them all. To learn more, please visit our website. Welcome back. We're in studio with Dr. Glenn discussing virtual colonoscopy. Doctor, I have to tell you, having had the virtual done, and, and obviously I've had the distinct pleasure of having a barium enema, I've had the rigid scope, and I've had four or six feet, whatever it happens to be, inserted inside of me. I don't understand, after having the virtual and seeing what it can do and, and the clarity of the images, why it's not the, the, the goal care. There, there, there's, there's no anesthesia. There's very limited, you're in, you're out, there's no pain. Why isn't everybody using that to detect cancer? A couple of reasons. Um, the fiber optic scopes, people believe, represent the way of visualizing, and if you can grab that scope and just uh, as if we had a light source on the end of it and the light source was illuminating the yellow here, as you pull that out, the endoscopist is only seeing 70 to, 79 to 80 percent of the surface of the colon. He's not seeing the green areas behind the folds. So why wouldn't you want to use the, you, could, you see everything in the virtual, and we see not? And we see upwards of 100 percent with the other. Now the other reason is there have been tremendous advancements just in the last four years. The first three major articles up through 2002 were done with single slice or dual slice, okay. and the important part what here... That, what does that mean, single slice? Do, the CT scanners gather pictures, axial pictures, So it's taking slice. one picture at a time. One picture at a time. Here it was one or two at a, at a time, and the resolution behind those ridges is what you see down here. The New, the New England Journal study was four-channel, and you see now, the this tremendous... One, this, the four-channel one said that, that, that virtual is as good as the scope it was said that it was better than the scope at the polyp diameters that matter, seven millimeters and above. Okay. So here we are with one or two, four channel, and yours was done on a 16 channel. This is over near the cecum. Now the and clarity is a lot better. Clarity is enormously better. So imagine what you'll be able to see behind these tall, deep mountain ranges or haustral folds. Okay, now you actually have designed software that takes that and flattens it completely out. Yes. Here's what we're able to do, Michael, and this is your data. Starting at the rectal end, you'll see here in the left side of the screen a collapsed segment which is open on the right side when you were lying on your tummy. And as we go up here, you'll see all these little bumps. And if we want to stop and interrogate any one of these little bumps with a 3D view or a 2D view, we can do that. But the bottom line is we can scroll from one end of your colon to the other in 90 seconds. 
So you can tell basically by that being that way, by being able to flatten it out like that and look at it, within 90 seconds you can scroll my whole colon, look through it, and tell me whether I have any polyps that would, be, that would need to come out or, or require further investigation. We can identify any suspicious areas, we can drill down on them and interrogate them with the other more conventional ways of looking at virtual colonoscopy data, the 3D views and the 2D uh, multiplanar views. Okay, so if somebody wants to get this done, if somebody basically is scheduled to go get a scope or if they want to know if they have cancer, I don't understand why if 60,000 people a year are dying, well I, I did with the scope, why they wouldn't go and get it done. I'm supposed to go every few years and get it done and I, and I almost refused to do it because it was extremely painful. With the virtual, there was no pain at all. So if somebody wanted to get it done and they didn't know where to go, or they didn't know what to do, can they, what, can they call you? I mean, is there somebody in the phone book you can look up? It's very new. And I, obviously, I didn't even know this existed until I heard about you and I called you and you, you were Adam and I get most, it done. Most centers, Michael, are not doing these. Uh, it takes too long and there's too much data. So we want to do this as a primary Does it take service. too long there's too much data because the center doesn't have the right equipment? Or, or because it didn't, I'm, I'm going to tell you, it took you no time at all to do this. And it didn't seem that, uh, it took you no time at all to put all these documents together. So obviously, it doesn't take that long if you have the right stuff. Uh, if they call our 1-800 number, we'll direct them to a local center in their neighborhood that can get this done. And they can go in and get it, and they'll, will they get the copies like I did? Will they get the nice flat? Can they keep it for their records? Sure. I, to me, it, it, it's incredible that I can have this, I can keep it, and five years from now, when I go to get my next one, I'll actually be able to compare myself. I didn't realize that they don't keep records of, your, of, the, of the, the scope when they put it up in there. No, nope, that's true. They don't and video you, it? You, you can have your rolled out flattening view, and you can put it on your wall if you want, or in a drawer. Well, Doc, I want to thank you for coming on the show. You have been, it's amazing what's out there. And I don't think that anybody realizes how fast computer technology is advancing. I mean, we, we use it every day in our life. We use the ATM machines, our telephones, our t everything in, in our lives is computerized. And yet when it comes to medical care, until I met you, th th there didn't seem to be that big push to take advantage of that stuff in that part of our lives. Well, I would ask that you tell your audience that you didn't believe a word I was saying. I didn't believe anything you said. Okay, and so now you do. And because of your personal experience in the past, and because of what we put you through and what you've seen and held in your own hand. Yeah, I was very scared. I want to tell you, I was, I was very scared. I played it off when I came, but I was very, very scared that day. And, and now, knowing what I know, five years, I'll go get my next one. Good it's, been a, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. I'll Thank have you. to have you back. Thank you. Thanks. You've been watching Medical News Network. For information on this topic or any other, please visit our website at medicalnewsnetwork.info. Until next time, I wish you good health.